In this video, we're going to devise a very simple approximation to the diode curve that lets us analyze circuits with decent accuracy. That approximation relies on the observation that exponentials change very quickly. Once an exponential gets going, it grows faster than any other relevant functions. As a result, we can basically say it's a straight vertical line. If we draw an IV curve that is dead flat at zero current, and then dead vertical at some voltage, we're not so far off from the voltage that would predict the actual current of the exponential. Um, and that's especially true if our current doesn't vary a ton. Um, this approximation is usually good over a decade or two of current change. Um, so as long as you don't expect your current to swing around by more than a factor of 10 to 100, this approximation gives you a decent answer. Of course, the choice of where to switch from horizontal to vertical is really important for this model. We name this parameter V on, and it's worth noting that V on increases by about 60 millivolts for each decade of change in current. Um, that's not a lot of voltage. 60 millivolts is only three times bigger than the noise limits of our oscilloscopes. And a decade is a big change in current, so it's pretty easy to pick a decent Vion value that's valid over the range of currents used in a uh, circuit that you're interested in. Um, for the case of silicon diodes, which are what we use in our labs, that Vion value is uh, 0.7 volts for currents that are about 1 amp, or 0.6 volts for currents that are about a milliamp. Um, and we usually use 0.7 volts as the assumed value in this class. We represent this approximation in a circuit as a switch in series with a voltage source, um, which is how the model gets its highly creative name of the switch voltage source model. Uh, the switch in the switch voltage source model closes if the diode voltage becomes higher than V on, um, at which point the diode acts like a small voltage source. Voltage sources provide the same voltage regardless of how much current is pulled out of them, so the voltage source is responsible for the vertical line on the IV curve. One aside that I love mentioning is that the value of V on depends on the material used to make diodes. Silicon diodes, which emit IR light if they're used as LEDs, have a on voltage of about 0.7 volts. Indium gallium arsenide phosphide alloys, which are used for red LEDs, have 1.6 volt on voltages. Green LEDs are made of neodymium doped yttrium al aluminum garnets, or indium gallium nitride alloys and they have a turn-on voltage of about 2.3 volts. And finally, blue LEDs are often made of silicon carbide, and they have turn-on voltages of 3.1 volts. And there's an interesting pattern here, where higher energy light, so right, blue is uh, one side of the rainbow and IR is deep into the other, um, seem to correspond to higher turn-on voltages. So you have this 3.1 volts necessary to make high-frequency blue light, and 0.7 volts necessary to make low-frequency IR light. Um, that pattern arises from an energy barrier that's designed into the materials. Semiconductors with larger energy barriers release higher energy photons when carriers recombine, but the larger energy barrier, but the larger energy barrier results in a higher turn-on voltage. While we're talking about energy barriers, it's important to note that V on is not the same thing as the built-in voltage in diodes, and trying to use VBI to calculate V on is a mistake, so don't get the two confused. We can see two examples of the switch voltage source model in action on this page, and a third being suggested in the lower right. On the left, the model works well. Um, we would check if the diode is conducting by comparing the voltage VD uh, against the on voltage the diode, but if we don't know VD, um, which we don't at the start, we can just uh, solve the circuit assuming both states of the diode and then see which one turns out to be true. Um, that technique, by the way, is of uh, guessing and checking is called the method of assumed states. Uh, the upper circuit shows the diode in its non-conducting state. And if no current is passing through the diode, then ID is zero, and VD is V, because there's no uh, drop across the resistor. Um, the bottom circuit assumes the diode is conducting, um, and so the diode has been represented by a voltage source of value V on that pins VD to V on. ID is calculated using the voltage difference across the resistor, and it's found to be V minus V on over R. Uh, the upper right of the slide shows a situation where this approximation works poorly. If you care about the 
uh, difference in voltage across two different diodes, or slight changes in the value of VD, then this approximation won't tell you anything interesting. Um, so if we used this approximation on the circuit in the upper right, it would predict that um, VD1 and VD2 are both about 0.7 volts. Which is true, but it's not helpful if you care about the difference between VD1 and VD2. So be careful of using this model if you care about small differences between multiple diodes in a circuit. However, uh, this model works well for lots of situations, including one classic one called an envelope detector that I've pictured on the bottom here. The diode in the envelope detector allows the capacitor to be charged when the input sine wave is increasing, but prevents it from discharging when the input sine is decreasing. That means the voltage across the capacitor is almost constant, except for a small discharge through the resistor in parallel with the cap. This discharge is um, corrected the next time the input sine wave reaches a peak, so you can see a slight discharge and then it gets bumped back up here. So it's often said that envelope detectors exhibit output ripple because that voltage fluctuates slightly um, in between the peaks of input sine waves. Um, and this resistor might be designed into an envelope detector deliberately to allow the detector to notice when the amplitude of the input goes down, um, or it might represent a load circuit. So in summary, you can approximate uh, exponentials with a piecewise linear model of no current and then infinite current. So the diode gets replaced by a switch plus a voltage source. You switch between the no current and infinite current uh, states in the switch voltage source model at an applied voltage of V on. V on depends on the exact current level, but it's about 0.7 volts for silicon diodes. And this model fails when you're comparing diode voltages to one another.